and welcome back to Get a Grip. This week we're going to be covering 13 essential features that every website should have. This is just kind of a broad summary of some key things your website should have, by no means a comprehensive guide, just some really important features for both SEO and user experience, and just kind of basic web design fundamentals. Uh, the first one's pretty straightforward, having a really clear navigation on your website. Uh, for users, you know, you want it to be more concise, uh, ordered properly, so they're finding everything they want easily. You don't want too many tabs, too many drop-downs. Uh, it can just get overwhelming and confusing. Uh, side navigations can also tend to make things a little harder to find, uh, such as having a nice top navigation uh, with maybe like four to five uh, main tabs and then you know the contact us couple drop downs uh, just keeping it clean keeping it simple keeping it well organized yeah I think a, a good bad example is when you go on a site and the hamburger menu is on the, the, the top left and it takes you a solid like 20 seconds to figure it out so you know you just want to avoid situations like that where you just come to your website and, like, and they're like where do I go you know mm -hmm. so I think another thing we see too with uh, another like good bad example uh, is people will try to get like fun or cutesy with like the phrasing of the top navigation so instead of like like home about us store contact us things like that they'll be like lifestyle or just different things uh -huh. where it's like harder you're like okay well what's really here I don't really know what this exactly means you want it, the wording to be like clear concise to the point yeah. they can find what they're looking for and then within the page you can kind of have that fun like play with words but for navigation you just want to make it as simple as possible so anyone can look at it and find what they're looking for uh, a second feature that kind of ties into that a little bit is having strong and consistent content so this comes into play with text content, photo content, uh, the content layout. You want it to be like follow somewhat similar style throughout the page. Obviously you don't want duplicate content issues or the same image on every page, but you want your branding to be consistent. So if you're doing graphics, they're kind of following your brand's color scheme. Yep. Uh, you're not having something that's like very abstract and like artsy on one page and then the next page is like a very technical uh, concise imagery. I mean, there's obviously some variation when it comes to like if you're doing blogs or press releases, but for just your core page layout, you want that consistent layout, consistent imagery, consistent branding, consistent style. Uh, just so everything's kind of flowing, it feels cohesive, it feels professional, it looks unified. Our third one is an extremely important one that is essential for every website, um, every business, every industry, and that's having a responsive web design. Uh, so essentially, well, responsive web design just ensures that your website looks the same, looks good, performs well, fits on any device, be it, you know, an iPad, an iPhone, uh, any other smartphone, your laptop, a PC. Uh, you don't want it to, like, sometimes on mobile devices, if websites aren't ro mobile responsive, it'll cut off half that content, which not only looks bad, but then the user can't really see or interact with the content. They might jump bounce off the page. Um, and this kind of ties a little bit into something new that comes up with GA4, uh, which is cross-device tracking cap capabilities, which is a really cool feature. Yeah, so if, if you want to find that, it's going to be on the tech overview section on GA4 on the left navigation panel. If you go in there, you will take a look at just like, you know, what screen resolutions your users are using or what uh, device they're using, what browser they're using. And that gives you a pretty good idea of how responsive your, your website design is and, you know, Let's say you have a website that, that's not very responsive to mobile. If you take a look at your traffic and you're seeing that you have a lot of people coming to, to your website uh, on their mobile devices, it's, it's probably a good sign to switch over to a mobile, um, mobile responsive design. So it's a good tool for you to use if you're gauging your, uh, your design strategy. Another one that seems kind of, uh, kind of self-explanatory or like a no-brainer would be having a contact us page but there's, you want to have the proper setup and content on that contact us page. So, you know, it's pretty basic, you know, you have your contact us page, you have maybe a submission form, maybe your phone number. Um, you want it to be easy to find and located in multiple places. So maybe it's in the footer, it's in the main navigation, uh, you maybe have your phone number in the top header, uh, things like that. You want it to be easy to find. You also want to give people multiple methods of contact. Uh, so instead of if you maybe just have a phone number, some people don't like to necessarily call, they don't like to talk on the phone, uh, it just makes it easier to have multiple methods, be it a phone number is always pretty much a standard good one to have, 
Uh, you can do an email, a submission form. Uh, in some cases, you could do by mail, but you know people aren't really sending mail like that uh, for business anymore. So just having the three standard would be you know your phone, your email, and then some kind of submission form, contact us form with multiple fields where they can enter their information, have their question or comment. Uh, just so you're giving them that variation uh, where they have they can choose the option they're more comfortable with, which just makes it easier for them to contact you and more likely to contact you. Uh, a super important thing with contact pages that's often overlooked uh, and super important for tracking capabilities is having a contact us confirmation page. Yeah, so whenever you want, um, whenever someone fills out a page, a, a form on your page, you want a, dis a clear distinction between your contact page and the page after someone has submitted a form. So let's say someone uh, submits a form on your contact page and that is mywebsite.com slash contact you want it to be mywebsite.com slash contact slash confirmation after they actually send a form. And this is important for a couple of reasons, mainly because you want to like track how many conversions you're actually getting. Because when someone gets to your contact page, that's not necessarily a conversion. And if you're running something like Google Ads, uh, you want to track your, your conversions properly. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, your numbers are accurate. So always have a unique URL uh, to ensure that um, your, your conversion numbers are accurate. Also, one thing I'd say is um, for your numbers, an uh, important thing is to make it clickable. I know a lot of people on desktop don't immediately click on the number on, on, on their PCs and call straight away, but people on mobile do. And, and, and it's always a good, um, a good thing to have it be clickable. And that is, is, is especially beneficial if you're uh, tracking it with uh, Google Tag Manager because it, it lets you track click text and you'll be able to see how many people are clicking on your uh, mobile number. So that's a good practice to have. And one last tip for this is um, on Google Analytics, if you want to see how many com how many conversions you're actually getting, go ahead into your URL bar and just type in like slash confirmation. And from there, you'll be able to see how many conversions you're actually getting versus how many people are actually coming to that contact us page. Because I guarantee you that a lot more people are coming to your contact us page and a lot of them are leaving um, and only a fraction of them are actually converting. So. It's always good to have that distinction set up. Absolutely. Our fifth element is another one that kind of seems like a obvious no brainer, but goes again into like having the right content and just the value of the content uh, is an about page. So most people, you know, usually do an about page with just like a short snippet, uh, maybe a picture when you were founded, just your basic mm -hmm. mission statement. Uh, that's certainly good to have, you know, a little bit of history. Like we've been demonstrate your experience. You know, we've been an established company for X, Y, Z years. Uh, our value statement, our mission, kind of giving that background, demonstrating that information, letting users know a little bit more about the company they're mm -hmm. working with. Uh, this is also a great place to have a team page uh, for a variety of reasons. Team pages can be important. Nowadays, people like to see who they're working with. It's also great for keywords, uh, kind of getting all your keywords in a centralized place. So naturally in like your mission statement in your about, um, things like that, you're going to include a lot of keywords like, oh, we're a plumbing company in Ames. So you're kind of hitting right. that keyword right there or on the jobs when we're hiring plumbers, like so you're just giving you the oppor extra opportunity to work in a lot of keywords, which anytime you can add more keywords, anytime you can add more content is always beneficial. Uh, talking about keywords, our sixth necessary item is an FAQ page. Uh, this goes into both SEO and user experience. Again, with that kind of idea of getting all of your core keywords in one place. So say you're, you know, a plumbing company and you offer like 10 different plumbing services. You know, there's toilets, sinks, showers, uh, drain cleaning, things of that nature. Your FAQ page, you could have one or two FAQs about every service you offer. So that one page has every core keyword, uh, it's including every service, it's including every kind of core plumbing company in X plumbing company or Iowa plumbers, things of that nature all in one spot. It's also a great spot for building out your internal linking structure. So you're having all your service keywords, all your core keywords, and then those FAQs are linking to those pages. So if someone Googles something like, um, how do I know when I need, need to see a doctor? Or how do I know if my toilet needs or my drains need clean, right. things like that. You know, sometimes those like rich snippets will pop up or those answers and then they see the question, they'll click on your website and then they're seeing your FAQ page, you know, they're seeing that link to like learn more about drain cleaning services. You click there and they go to that page and then they might book a service with you. So it's just a great internal link building. And then from user expect experience, 
you know, it's giving them more information, kind of persuading them like why they would need the service, when they would need it, uh, just giving them basic information. And, you know, it kind of gives it in a snapshot type form, whereas obviously you want that content on your service page, but when there's just like a question and then an, a brief answer, it kind of gives them people like, you know, short, concise answers. So they're seeing that, they're seeing the answer, and then if they choose to explore further, they have the link to that page. Uh, our seventh one is social icons. Uh, there's a variety of different kind of ways this can manifest. The most obvious one is just having, you know, somewhere in your header, your footer, uh, your little clickable icons to all of your social media channels, just so that, you know, they're looking at your website, they want to see more, they want to learn more. You're kind of promoting that social traffic, you know, and then on social you're promoting, you're linking back to your website, so that way you're just getting a nice flow of traffic both ways. Um, another way that this can present itself is with the like shareable social links. So if you have like a blog or a product or you're offering some kind of promotion and you offer those clickable icons where it's like share this on social and then when the user clicks it, uh, it like takes itself into a Facebook post on their account so they can share it. Uh, so that way you're kind of giving increased opportunity for people to share your posts, share your products, uh, share your just general information. A third one is kind of related to just basic social icons, but if you have something like a consulting firm or um, in our case maybe like a digital marketing firm or a tech firm, you could do like on if you have that like staff profile page, uh, clickable icons to their individual LinkedIn's. So you know obviously you're going to have your like company LinkedIn in your header or footer, but you know if someone's going to work with a consultant, uh, they might want to see you know what experience do they have, what education do they have. Uh, what kind of content are they posting professionally? So that can be nice to have that uh, there in their profile so that they can visit the person. Again, it's building that trust, learning more about who they're going to work with, just kind of establishing that connection a little bit further. Our eighth essential website feature uh, is CTAs, calls to action. Uh, this is extremely important. It's just the little, obviously you have them throughout the content, you know, maybe like contact us, learn more. But at the bottom, you always want like a clear, separated, kind of call to action and you want it to vary throughout the website. So some are going to be the same, you know, like contact us, uh, but you can switch it up with like request a free quote, uh, request a free consultation, uh, order online, sign up for more, things like that. So they're kind of switching up your calls to action. Uh, and you can put kind of like tracking tags on these different CTAs and compare what specific verbiage is getting more clicks and kind of use that to decide what to make your CTAs, where to place them, how to format them. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of A-B testing involved to see which CTAs are performing the best. Like Alex said, uh, putting um, you know Google Tag Manager tags on those, creating triggers of click text to see which, you know, which CTAs in particular are getting the most traction. Maybe um, you know if you're working with different styles of buttons or different just types of call to actions, it's always a good idea to start tracking it with uh, Google Tag Manager and having that data feed through Google Analytics. And from there, it gives you kind of clear cut examples of which CTAs work the best. So I always recommend doing that. So that's a good idea to go down. Another great page to have is a testimonials page. Um, aside from the obvious reason of kind of showing users like, oh, they're trustworthy, they have good service, what other customers have said, because obviously you're going to say good things about yourself, but it helps to show real examples. Um, aside from that obvious reason, there are a couple other benefits to having that page. One, there's, you know, the possibility for a lot of extra keywords to be added in, which as we touched on is always a good thing. So, you know, if this, you're, I keep coming back to the plumbing example, say you're a plumber and one of the reviews is, they were super fast professional drain cleaning services or the plumbers were excellent or the best plumbers and names, then you're kind of getting those keywords in there. So then you're picking up on those keywords that might be sometimes in some cases harder to work in or in some cases could sound maybe like you're bragging about yourself, but when you have someone else saying it, you're working in like that best or fastest or most cost effective, things like that into your testimonials page. It also helps with uh, social media marketing you usually want to have some kind of like testimonial highlight, be it like every other week, once a week, once a month. And it helps just have that like centralized location. Obviously there's Google My Business, but it gives you a place to link back to from those testimonials. So when you post that testimony on social, you could say read more and then you're getting more people to your website. Yeah, a good source of testimonials are actually your Google My Business profile. But I will say a good practice to before you take that from Google and put it on your website is just reach out to the person who wrote the review and say, hey, is it um, is this okay if we use it on our website and put your first name or your first name and your uh, the initial of your last name. So that's a good source for you, for you to look at. 
or you know if you send out invoices or if you have an email signature it's that's mm -hmm. a good place to put in a link to your um google my business or your, just a testimonials uh, form it's also a great way to encourage getting more testimonials and getting more engagement on your site uh, if you have the some kind of submission form on the page where they're like share your testimony and share your story mm -hmm. share your experience and if someone sees that like oh i had a really great experience i can share it on the website as well so that way you're kind of yep. you're getting that kind of lead generation and that extra submission form um just kind of giving people more opportunity to stay on your website longer interact with your website uh submit their information mm -hmm. on your website things of that nature uh, our tenth one we've kind of touched on a little bit uh, as we touch on each area, but it's just so essential that it kind of needs to be its own area. And that is having a variety of tracking capabilities on your website. So, you know, that could be Google tags, uh, Google tracking tags. It could be, obviously you'd want Google analytics. There's so much more that kind of goes into that, but you need to have a variety of features to be tracking the performance on your website. Yeah, so there are a lot of things that come into play here. You know, certain websites that I've seen have buttons that don't have click text on them or buttons that don't have anything trackable on them. You want to make sure every button on your website is unique or distinguishable enough for Google Tag Manager to pick up on. So you can look at each button's performance and you know just how each button is working out. It, it's always a good idea to, you know, if you're not a developer yourself, maybe speak to a developer or do some research on how you can make each button on your website distinguishable. Because I've seen situations where every button on the website has the same uh, button class or the same click text and there's no way to determine, okay, this button belongs here and this button belongs there. So it's always a good idea to make sure that um, your website is fully optimized, set up for unique tracking and for efficient tracking. Yeah, so our 11th one, our 11th of essential website feature is having that strong internal linking structure, which I touched on a little bit earlier, uh, but it's again something that just is so fundamental to have that often gets overlooked. Uh, SEO best practice is for like core pages, so for if you're a, serv a service-based business, um, for every service or if you're an e-commerce maybe for every like category like you know to pants to shirts to jewelry You have at least two internal links on other pages pointing to that page uh, It helps for SEO for helping the search engine bots kind of crawl and understand Okay, what pages are important? Like if you don't have links leading to a page they're like, oh, it might not be as important But if they see a ton of links leading to a page like this is an important page This is a primary service or product category uh, this sh we should be crawling this page, we should be ranking this page, we should be indexing this page. Uh, and then from a user perspective, that link structure kind of encourages them to stay on your website longer, to visit other pages, to maybe like find a service that they might not have known you offer. So if you're an e-commerce business and you sell clothing and they organically find your website looking for a shirt they like, um, and it's like a cow print shirt, and then they see check out more or check out matching cow print accessories and then it links to like your accessories they might oh wow i didn't know they had like cow print accessories or i might as well get something to match the shirt and then you're kind of just building uh or increasing the opportunity for them to make additional conversions be it like contacting you scheduling a service buying a product things of that nature our 12th uh, is having some kind of subscription options and this can vary uh you can have multiple different styles depending on what type of features mm -hmm. your website offers um on ours i know we have a variety for our blogs uh, you can sign up to receive updates every time a blog is po posted uh, so that way people are like you're keeping that in their mind you know that they are that you have a blog posted they know what it's about they maybe come to your website uh if you have a newsletter like be it a blog recap or if it's like a promotional newsletter with like sales and deals or new product releases um, you can also have a subscription feature on job listings to like notify me when a new job is posted or notify me when this job is closed i kind of keep people in loop press releases there are so many different subscription features you could have this is great obviously for you're getting you're staying in their minds you're sending in those emails where they see a blog a sale a product that they might be interested in, and then they come to your website it's also great for lead generation. So, you know, you're collecting their emails uh, and just the more emails you collect, the more people you have to reach out to, to like get your eyes on those service. So you're promoting them on your website, you're promoting them on social, but then you're getting directly in these consumers inboxes and you know they're interested because they signed up for it. Yep. So you're kind of getting that direct engagement with someone who you know already has some level of interest in your product or service. Our final a uh, website feature that we think is essential to have on every website, our 13th feature, uh, is 
footer content and strong footer content. So naturally everyone has a footer on their website and you know, everyone thinks to throw some things in there, but there are a couple key features that we think it's a super important and we always advise everyone to have. Um, obviously you want your contact information in there. Uh, so your phone, your email, or a link to your submission form. If you have a physical location, uh, you want your mm -hmm. location there just so it's kind of visible. You know, people tend to like want to find things really quickly all in one spot and without scrolling. So the footer is just a great place to have all your information in one visible place. Um, some other things that are nice to have in there is that like subscription option. If you have a newsletter, having just right in the footer, subscribe to our newsletter, uh, just so it makes it easy for them to find, uh, might encourage more submissions. Quick links are also a great thing to have. So by no means you want to list your whole, you could put your site map in your, a link to your site map in your footer, but you don't want the whole site map itself. It's just a lot of content, but for quick links, you know, maybe a link to contact us, your services, main page, your locations, um, and then maybe FAQs, just like five or six quick links that take them to core pages on your website so they can scroll to the bottom. They can easily see, okay, here's their social icons. Here's their contact information. Here's what I could subscribe to. And here are the main pages. It just creates a really strong foundational block for people to find what they're looking for. Maybe it's just me, but when I'm in a pinch, I just go straight down to either the uh, bottom right of the website or just, just the bottom of the website in general, just to have all the information consolidated. If it's a restaurant, have your opening hours in there. Just have information that you think the average visitor to your website would want quickly, because that's just a really easy resource for people to kind of default to. So that's a great place to, to optimize and have the right information for. And as we had said, these aren't necessarily just every single feature you should have. There's a lot more that goes yep. into having a great website. Uh, but these are kind of 13 things that are easy to easier to accomplish and that are extremely foundational for having a great website. Uh, we have our blog post on our website that discusses these features in a little more detail, offers some more tips, and also some related blogs um, on how to improve your technical SEO, how to improve your web design, things of that nature. So be sure to check out our blog for more information, more detail. Um, and until then, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Get a Grip. Thanks for watching.